Right, today we're gonna to show you how to put together a new kit we're putting on the website, which is our Digiboil three vessel brewery kit. So a lot of you guys getting into brewing have gone down the avenue of our Bruzilla single vessel breweries, and by all means, single vessel breweries bring a whole lot of convenience, a speed on the brew day, which is sort of faster to get through a batch, and minimize the amount you have to wash out. However, it doesn't suit everyone, and we still get requests from people who wanna build a three vessel system because they want a three vessel system because maybe they're moving up into a commercial brewing role or want a recipe which is gonna be translatable into a commercial brewing role, and three vessel systems are more similar to the large commercial brew houses, or for people who just wanna train on a three vessel brewing system because they're looking to expand their career in the brewing industry or so forth, then three vessel kind of makes a lot of sense in that respect. And if you're a more technical brewer, I suppose, and there's some technical things you want to achieve with a three vessel, then certainly this will do that job for you. Now, as you can see, we've built the three vessel system out of digiboils. Now, digiboils are kind of like the perfect vessel for the job. Firstly, they've got all the electronics already built into the base, so it means this whole system, you don't have to, you know, wire up elements and, you know, stuff like that. So. You know, that's already done. It's a nice little display which you can clearly see the temperature and then you can also increase or decrease the power by switching off these elements uh, individually on every one of the vessels. The other nice thing is also the elements in here are the low watt density. So unlike, you know, some of the high powered stick elements which have a bit of a tendency to scorch your wood, these are concealed in the base, making them very easy to clean, but also low watt density. So you're not gonna caramelize that beer and you're not gonna have every single lager tasting like, you know, marshmallow caramel or something like that, you know? So um, low watt density is really important and uh, yeah, it does make the system much nicer to use and means your boils are a lot nicer. So don't get, tend to get these really uh, aggressive boil overs when you're not using extremely high element powers. Um, yeah, the other thing is, uh, yeah, we've kind of designed this so it suits like off the shelf equipment. So this is a rack which we've just bought down from the hardware store and we've custom made some of the more uh, complicated parts so you don't have to do that yourself. So I've got these stainless steel pump hangers uh, so the pumps mount onto the front really easily and you really don't have to do much to use them. Now, because we've got the elements concealed in the base, even the mash tun, this is technically a rim system but if you wanted to uh, you know, buy a separate uh, you know, immersion chiller coil, you can actually kind of turn this into a Herm system as well. But look, the rims makes it very fast to heat up and really I'd probably just use that because it's the easiest one to go with. Now behind me you can see I've got three 65 litre digiboils in this particular kit. Now each one of these will draw 15 amps, that's at the 220 to 240 volt range AC. Um, so ideally, if you had enough power in your house to plug all three of these in at the same time, that is the best case scenario. But look, some people won't be able to do that, but luckily, you know, what you could do is get away with even one socket, preheat your water here, then you could mash in, and then once you've uh, mashed in and got all your, your, uh, your hot liquor water over here to mash, then you could start heating up this guy, and it would be a bit of a fiddling around, but you could get away with one socket. Look, ideally, at a minimum, I would say two sockets would be best, which means you're gonna to have to have two 15 amp sockets. But, you know, if you uh, really have the uh, ability to have three 15 amp sockets, that'll make this system much, much better to use because it means you can crank all three of them up at the same time and it'll really speed up that brew day. The Digiboils are a perfect vessel for making a three vessel system. They've got a nice concealed base, making it really easy to clean. But the reason why we haven't done this in the past is we didn't have suitable heavy duty false bottoms. So now we have these false bottoms and they are really heavy duty. As you can see, I'm jumping on top of this false bottom here. And this false bottom will go inside the digiboil like that to make our mash tun. Now, as you can see, that false bottom is going over the actual tap itself. So I'm dropping that in on there and everything that goes out of the tap hole here basically will, uh, will, be, will be going through this filtered base. So yeah, I, I can use one of these for the mash tun, but the other thing is uh, for some people who want to upgrade the kettle, you might even want to put one of these in the kettle and prevent a lot of the hops going out through the, uh, through the tap here into your pump and then blocking that and stuff like that down the track. Now, the reason why false bottoms need to be so heavy duty in this type of scenario is not because they need to hold you know, the grain itself, because the grain, what we've got like maybe 40, 50 kilos of grain in here, but really you have to rate them suitably for the pumps. So you see pumps are able to suck quite a lot. So if you get, for instance, one day a, spush, a stuck mash, so that means the mash is completely stuck and it's not really drawing the liquid through properly, you can start to get suction happening 
uh, which is developed by the pump. So essentially, if you look at the pump specification and it's 3.4 meters head, then ideally you want a screen which is strong enough to be able to handle 3.4 meters of water, imaginary water this is, above the height of the kettle. So in this particular instance, because of the diameter I've got here, this false bottom, if I was to you know, have 3.4 meters of head of liquid on here, the false bottom needs to handle roughly about 400 or so kilos. So that's a lot of weight and that will totally crush a lot of false bottoms. So if you've got a false bottom that's a lot thinner or one of the cheaper ones, you know, it'll probably work most of the time until that, you know, that disastrous day when you have a stuck mash and then the pump starts to suck full bore and then will literally collapse your false bottom. So that's why your false bottoms need to be fairly strong. So I tried to make this as standard as possible using off the shelf parts. So there was no reason for us to make racks because there's plenty of good racks out there. Uh, these particular ones are the racket ones from Bunnings. So you can buy these and we've laser cut some stuff here, right here at the factory in our laser cutter and brake press. So we make up these stainless steel add-ons for you. And I've also got some stainless steel labels which we laser cut as well. So I've got uh, kettle, HLT and mash tun so you can label the shelving like so. So let's get into it. So with these, uh, with these types of hanger, pump hangers here, what you can do is uh, put them on this. When you space these shelves on the closest spacing you have here, this will be a nice tight fit on the shelving like so. And then with the pumps, uh, we've already got holes which are pre-laser cut here so you can mount the pumps to the front of it like this, or like this rather, like that. And now with the electronics, look, you could just plug that into the PowerPoint. If you guys don't want to do any you know, electrical work whatsoever, you can just plug it in and away you go. However, some of you guys uh, who have a friend who's an electrician or something like that, you'll be able to get these switches. This is an off the shelf part. It's actually one of the spare parts for all of our Brewzillas and Robo Brews and stuff like that. So these are the uh, uh, 30 amp switches. And you can just drop these into this like that and then you can wire them into place so you can have a wired up pump so you can turn the pump on and off here. So I'm just gonna show you how we set them up. As you can see with the pump hangers, it really makes like mounting the pumps really easy. And then obviously these labels are clearly labeling your mash tun. Now these parts will be available separately. If you want to build your own system, you can buy these individual parts or labels separately and then build your own three vessel system. The other thing is we've got the silicon hose. One six meter heavy duty uh, silicon hose is uh, gonna be enough to do pretty much the whole plumbing job. So that's what I've got in the kit. We've also included cam locks. Now generally, uh, with the cam lock, you should put all the male cam locks on the vessels and the pumps, and then your hoses will have the female cam locks on both ends. So that's generally the convention. So to get these on, you can use the worm drive hose clamps, which you do have if you're the kind of person who is unsure of the system and may want to take the, uh, the fittings on and off. But look, I've measured these uh, you know, fit hoses up, so they're pretty much the right length, and I know they're about right. So I'm going to use these stepless fittings. So for this type of half inch silicon tubing, we're using the 20.5 millimeter stepless clamp on here. And these are kind of nice because they give it a much more streamlined finish rather than having this big sort of worm drive thing sitting out there and it's sometimes obstructing the, uh, you know, the cam lock fittings from closing correctly. So yeah, make sure to put the hose clamp on first. This is the bit I always make the mistake. So put that on first and then put the uh, cam lock on after that. And then what you'll want to use is one of these sort of uh, you know, crimping tools to crimp that uh, stepless fitting down. So really simple, just goes like that and it crimps down. So these aren't reusable. So yeah, you want to make sure your hoses are the right length uh, before you join them on. And then they just crimp on, crimp on like that. Now I've just got these loosely done up. So they're sort of wobbling around a bit just for the video, but you get the point. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention is you probably notice we've got two different pumps here. So, like what you can do is get the, uh, the stock standard pump with the plastic pump head. We do also have a stainless steel pump head if you want sort of a medium price sort of upgrade, um, or if you want sort of the best upgrade, I guess. This triclover pump head does make it really easy to take apart the whole pump for cleaning and so forth. So this one will require a whole lot of uh, screws. You've got six screws on the end, so then you can remove the pump head and clean. This one here, I can actually just undo the triclover clamp and then take the whole pump head off like that. So that's a new product which just came into stock. Also, the other thing I should say is these pump heads have a, um, 
a handy little purge valve here. So this is actually one of our uh, Cornelius uh, pressure release valves. We're trying to keep all our parts as standard across the board as possible so where your spare parts are compatible. Um, but this screws in here like so. And then what you can do is if you have a bubble in the line, sometimes when you're first just priming the pump, it's a bit of an issue if you've got a bubble here. So what you can do is you can just go like that and bleed that bubble out of here and make sure that uh, that liquid fills right into the pump head. Now, for you guys who haven't used a three vessel system, I'll quickly run through the mechanics of what's going on here. Uh, we've got a hot liquor tank over here, HLT. Uh, basically, HLT just means hot water, but it's just one of those confusing terms we use in the uh, industry to confuse a lot of entry-level brewers. So what we've got is our hot water sitting in here. We're gonna heat all of that up to our strike temperature. So our strike temperature essentially just means the temperature which we're gonna mash in at. Um, and then what we're gonna, once that's hot, we're gonna transfer the water over into this vessel. Now, if you've got two power points at a minimum, you can actually plug both of these in, have your hot water liquor tank heating, your hot liquor tank heating the water, and you can have already water in your mash tun heating as well. But if you've only got one power point, you'd have to heat the entire lot of water inside your hot liquor tank before you get started. So yeah, you flick the hose over like this, and let's say I'm filling up into the mash tun, this kit, uh, you know, we do generally recommend having a nice big mash tun like this so you can stir in all the grain and uh, make sure you get all those dough balls out. Now, this is actually what we call a rim system. So rims essentially just means we've got an element in the base of the mash tun here. So what we're doing is when we're mashing in, it's quite often the case that we wanna step that mash temperature up as we go throughout that 60 minute mash um, or, or, or 30 minute mash or whatever it is that you wanna do. Um, and uh, the other thing is if you haven't quite hit that target, uh, you know, when you've got your strike water in, let's say you're slightly below your temperature you wanna be, um, then obviously the element's kinda nice because then you can recirculate and then heat that up a little bit further if you've got your calculations a little bit wrong. So yeah, generally this pump here is to pump the water from the, uh, the hot liquor tank into the mash tun. And then the second pump is to recirculate in the mash tun like this. So I'd recirculate while I'm mashing. When that mashing process is complete, I'll flick this hose over to this vessel over here, which is the kettle. And then what I do is crank this up to full power, um, boil the hops in here, and eventually transfer out of here and uh, yeah, cool the work down. Sorry. Now most of the three vessel systems you see on the market will have all of the three vessels the same size. And look, it kind of does look cool to have them all the same size, I guess. So you know, if you're into your sexy stainless steel blink, then you know maybe that's a good enough reason to keep them all the same vessel. However, a mash tun of this size really can make a lot more beer than just that size of mash tun. So for that size mash tun, you may want to think about putting these extensions onto the boiler. So these are an add-on extra, which you can drop on like this. And it doesn't just have to be one of them. You could put even two or three of these on top like that. So technically, a mash tun of that size, I could probably even do up to sort of, you know, 70 or 80 litres of finished wort for this type of system. So yeah, that goes on top and that's gonna extend my boil volume if I wanted to do some really, really big batches. All right, now that pretty much completes, uh, you know, the whole build and rundown of our new three vessel digiboil kit. The other thing I wanted to mention, we have the same type of gear available for the 35 litre, but I haven't bothered to shoot the video because it's exactly the same as this, except you, instead of using the large 65 uh, litre Digiboil false bottoms, this uses the 35 litre Digiboil false bottoms. They're also available on the website to build smaller systems. Anyway, that's pretty much it for today. If you guys have any other questions or comments or you wanna see us make any custom made stuff for you guys, uh, please let us know in the comments below. Just comment down there. And of course, subscribe to the video. Bottom right hand corner, subscribe to the video channel so you can hear about all the cool new stuff that's coming out. And lastly, join our Facebook homebrew community group. If you're keen and love the hobby of uh, homebrewing, then you really wanna join that group and share tips and tricks on how to use the gear and get the most out of it. Anyway, that's it and see you guys next time. Bye.